this week. Um, I am drawing, let me see here, Richard Ashcroft with the uh, the contest on Facebook. Uh, what I do a lot of times, I try to watch videos of the of the person. Um, and this one I was able to watch a, a video of uh, this guy. And apparently he's a musician. Uh, so I got to learn a lot about his history, but the the benefit, the point of watching the uh, video uh, to draw the caricature, is so that you're able to see and and get a, a feeling of the person that you can't normally get on a, on a still uh, picture. Uh, it's not moving. Huh? I'm I'm telling I'm telling him. Let me tell you too. Okay, you can sit. You can stand right here and listen. Okay. Okay. Um. I was saying, I normally draw. Daddy. What? Daddy, say we, this is my friend named Baby Garcia Mac. Okay, this is my son named Baby Mackie Garcia. Okay, you have to be very quiet, okay? Okay. All right. That's my son. Um, so I, I, I normally watch, try, to, try to watch a video. Um, I really lo love drawing people live. <laughs> I like drawing live caricatures. I, 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 that's my, that's my passion. I guess I like to do that more than custom caricatures, uh, or from pictures or whatnot. So, anyways, uh, I, I'd like to look at videos because you can, you can get a vibe of the person. You can even hear his, his voice. And and uh, Nate Cap uh, mentioned at the last caricature convention, he mentioned that when you're drawing a caricature. Uh, try to find out what noise they make. Now that sounds a little weird, but he explained it to us. He says when he looks at a picture uh, or a person, um, whether video or, or in person or even through pictures, I, I would imagine, the person, a, a sound comes from it. There's a sound that comes from it. I'm sure you can imagine a sound coming from Hulk, Hulk Hogan when you, I think he's a wrestler, and so when you look at his picture, there's a certain sound, a certain grunge sound that comes from even his pictures that you can you can tell from his expression. There should be a ringing in your ear, I guess a sound, so to speak, that, that would come out. So he tries to capture that in the caricature. And you can tell uh, when he even, he even does that in the backgrounds, uh, like in the colors and the different things. You can capture the sound very well in the flesh tones that he uses. And Nate, Nate does a really good job doing that, capturing the sound of the caricature or of the person, if that if that helps anything. So, in, uh, long story. I, I I watched the video of this guy. Didn't look at any pictures, um, and, and until I got to the details um, towards the end, I, I pulled up uh, two pictures, um, and I just kind of helped with the shading and things. But but the main ninety percent of this caricature was done, uh, except the last like hour or so, or last thirty minutes that you'll see. Um, was done all solely through the, this video, and it's I just I just pulled up his name, got on YouTube, and uh, an interview popped up. Uh, it was like an MTV special, uh, so uh, that helps. So when you're drawing celebrities, just type in the word interview after them, and you can kind of see them um, with different head shapes. As they turn turn their heads, you can see their shape of their head. You can see different angles. You can actually see them interact how they would normally do. You can kind of see their personality. Um, a little bit better. So interviews um, help out a lot if you type an interview after someone's name. Uh, but anyway, so this one popped up uh, as an interview and I watched this video and it helped a lot. So I was able to see his, his overall features. I, I, liked, I, I was able to see them move and it helped me create the the um, like the angle that I drew him in. Um, a lot of times, I was trying to explain to someone on on the Facebook page. Um, it, it helps if you if you figure out the top three features that stand out to you. Now, it doesn't have to be like a lip or a nose. It can it can be just an overall shape of a head, a feeling you get when you look at the person. Um, so, like if you make a list of the main features that the guy has or things that stand out that's unique in light of a normal person. Um, it's good to write that, those those things down, um, and then then, then when you, as you're drawing the caricature, you you remember those things, you you focus on those features compared to getting sidetracked from other features that aren't on that list. For example, if uh, when I looked at this guy, I automatically and I didn't write anything anything down. It just it just normally I normally do that. I'm just kind of used to it. 
Um, but what popped in my brain was this really long nose and then this long face and then these cheekbones. So I, I would have probably, um, if I would have wrote it down, it would have been long nose, um, uh, huge cheekbones, um, and then and then long face or something like that. Um, uh, I do incorporate all the other features. It's just that there's a main there's a main feel that's going on that I try to capture, and those are the main three features that I put on there that I would have put, but it did, I did note it in my mind. So I was trying to think. Okay, so even before I drew anything, how am I going to position this face uh, to emphasize? Uh, or to bring out those three features or those three main characteristics of the guy. So I'm thinking, okay, well, if I draw him from a bird's eye view, uh, that's going to express that's going it's going to show his cheekbones and his nose. So that was a good idea. Um, and then I was thinking, well, if I do it from if I did it from the towards the bottom, like as though I was a really short um, a midget or maybe an animal looking up at him. Um, that kind of ex would expose his chin, his neck, uh, underneath his chin, his jaws, and I would be able to see his nostrils. If I did it in that angle, um, I wouldn't be able to capture those main features that I jotted down in my mind, like his nose. And f for example, the, if I did it from uh, a downward view, uh, his nose wouldn't look long. It wouldn't, it wouldn't express what I had uh, jotted down. Um, it would the nose would actually look really short so if that helps anything if, if that makes sense um, this the, so this was the uh, way I drew him I drew him kinda as a quarter view um, that would bring out the the cheekbones I kinda as you can see they're kinda it stuck out um, I made sure to bring out the nose you could see it, it lengthen um, and eventually I kinda knock out the uh, nostril area um, it kind of I smooth it out uh, towards the end um, because it kind of distracted from the length of the nose uh, so that also brings a good point to mention that not, not to be afraid if you're drawing caricatures uh, to eliminate a lot of the features uh, to make room for the others um, if you have a long nose and you're drawing them straight if you choose to do that well you don't have to draw the, the top lip um, if the nose arches over the top lip, if it's so exaggerated, don't be afraid to do that because if you if you if you bring down the bottom lip and the whole mouth, well then that space between the nose and the mouth it, it becomes a really long space. And if the person doesn't have that, um, then you're not going to help the the caricature and its likeness. So um, anyway, so don't be afraid to eliminate. Um, uh, features now that doesn't that doesn't that might not help much to those who have a different style so but um, in my case it does help me a little bit I do eliminate some features uh, to kinda to that you know to kinda help with uh, bringing out the other features and sometimes I exaggerate a, a, too much or a, a lot to where I have to take out those features some of the features so anyways um, you're going to see in a little bit um, See what I'm doing here is uh, making a lot of changes. Um, whoa, that was the video I, I was gonna try to show, but it was sped up. So, but I, anyways, I just took a, I just brought the camera up and showed a video. That's that's the video that I was watching. I just replayed it over and over and over and over. Um, I would do, I do listen to some music, so I listen to music on my headphones, and I, but I was able to listen to the uh, the audio. Or maybe I at least watched the whole thing and most of the whole thing. Um, I was able to hear the history of the guy. He re he really writes um, um, with a passion. Like he he doesn't uh, make music for money and things like that. Uh, not that it's wrong to make a living off what you love to do, but uh, he he does um, do it because he loves to do it. Um, from what he said. Um, anyway, so what was I saying? Yeah, towards no, so what I'm doing now, as you can see in the video, um, I'm I'm doing a lot of editing. I'm doing a lot of changing. See, what happened was I planned to do an acrylic painting of the thing, but last night I got caught up into editing it. Uh, even today I did a little bit of editing, but yesterday I just I was gonna paint it, and I just I just kept working at it. We got back from church, and I just kept kept working on this thing, and. Um, 
I just kept I just kept editing, changing, exaggerations. As you can see, I just keep changing things. I changed the whole jaw or the whole chin area um, compared to the one that I, I uploaded uh, yesterday on on the group page. Um, and eventually, see that that jaw, the chin. I'm sorry, the uh, jaw bones, not the jaw bones, the cheekbones. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna change that whole thing. I think I must have erased that part right there where where I'm shading right there. I think I erased that whole thing like at least two or three times. Um, but you're gonna see I'm gonna be erasing it in a little bit and doing it over and over and over just until I get it right. I guess uh, I'm trying to. I'm just kind of practicing and experimenting. So it's not. It's not. It's not wrong to experiment. That's the good thing about pencil. It, it, it erases really well. Um, so I'm able to go back and erase. I really like uh, pencil. And so, but that whole area too, the the eyebrows right there, I'm changing out the whole thing. I gave him kind of like a unibrow at first, um, and then I noticed in the in the in his video that uh, he has a really large space there. It doesn't really go in deep. Um, and I give him a few hairs in that area, but anyways, you're gonna see me separate it in just a little bit. Um, but I I just kept going back and editing it and editing it and changing it. Uh, to help with the likeness, um, so but it's not. It's, I would say I would say it's really important to do sometimes to take the time and, and and just change it up and compared to going straight for the acrylic and straight for the painting and straight for the fun stuff as far as filling in the the sh shadows and things like that. Um, the foundation is really 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 important. I, I think it's it's probably the most important thing compared to the technique or compared to doing all the pretty stuff. Uh, the pretty stuff is cool. I mean, uh, it, it adds a lot of likeness a lot of times when you're doing oil paintings or acrylics or watercoloring. But the main thing, the fun thing, is is doing the uh, the foundation work, doing the actual caricature, drawing out the foundation, drawing out the main thing. Um, I like to give the example: if you're a, a builder, uh, you're building a home, but you're, the foundation isn't that great. And you know, you can you can decorate really well. You can do all the paintings on the wall and match all the the colors and do a great color scheme. But eventually, if if the foundation's bad, that's not going to be worth much, or it's gonna it's it's gonna come down at the whole house. I mean, so um, when you're drawing caricatures, the foundation is really important. You know, making sure it's likeness, make sure it has the right exaggerations, and it ended up ended, ended up being really. Um, uh, important in another aspect for me to get kind of sat track and just keep keep editing it because I didn't actually finish it or do any of the color that I thought I would. Um, it, it turned out to be good because um, I started to think um, when when I do a lot of color caricatures, it's because the color of the character of the person it kind of stands out. So um, it I, I think what I'm trying to say is I think this person really um, I think in my opinion I think it. He, his face, his caricature works best in the black and white. Um, and some other people, some other celebrities, uh, color works better because a lot of the colors that they have on their face, it really stands out. Uh, Bruno, um, it's a weird last name, it starts with an H. He does really, really great color caricatures. But but a lot of times the, um, the, the, the person that we're drawing, they look better in black and white. And I think he drew the guy last week, Stan, he drew it in black and white, and in fact, all the pictures that you can find of that celebrity, of that guy, were all in black and white. So it was almost a given that he looked best in black and white. But uh, um, for some other people, you, you, you know, if 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 they have really cheek, really rosy cheeks, then they look gr they would look great in color. It would look great, and you bring that out, you would exaggerate on that. So, anyways. Um, this guy at the end, it turned out that I, I thought he looked better in black and white because there wasn't anything in, in his face and his flesh that stood out in color. So what I'm taking right there, as you can see in the video, I stuck it on this tan paper after I, I finished it. I, I added a bunch of tape. That's tape right there. It's called, uh, it's from Scotch. Um, I guess you could pause the video and look at it, but it's, it's, like, it's like a roller tape, like wide out. And that's what I used because it was kind of floppy. So... I'll see you next week, and there's the finished picture.